Whenever you desire to be, to do, and to have some good, ask yourself, how would it feel if my good desire were already manifest? And conjure up that feeling within your mind and put it on and wear it. How many of you here have some particular good desire that you, you're thinking about in your heart right now? Let me see you, your hand. All right, I want you to talk to yourself out loudly now. Touch yourself and ask yourself this. How would I feel if my good desire were already manifest? How would you feel if that house were already sold? How would you feel if that problem were already worked out? Huh? Come on, conjure it up now. You know, that's another thing, you know, you're a conjurer too. It just depends on what kind of conjurer you are. You see, but you're to conjure up good thoughts, moods, attitudes, and ideas instead of conjuring up the blues and hatred and love and all those other things. You've got to learn the art of conjuring. I know what helps me to conjure up my good feelings. That's why I'm going to Brazil tomorrow. That helps me to conjure up all kinds of good feelings. When I get in the air, I know the telephone's not going to ring. If it does, it makes no difference now. I conjure up good feelings by just window shopping. And I just conjure up such good feelings window shopping until many times the beautiful things just crawl right out of the stores. And say, take me along with you. <laughs> Conjure up the mood. Learn. Make, make it a science. Make it an art. That's why we call this mind science. That's why we call this science of living. This business of living should be a science. It should be an art. It should not be a hit and miss. It should not be like they, all, like they used to sing in the black church. Sometimes I'm up. Sometimes I'm down. Sometimes I'm almost level with the ground. Why, hell, the devil doesn't get that low. I must have power over my feelings and moods. Come on. I must have power over my feelings and moods. I'll tell you one thing, and this is the law. If you don't control your moods, your moods will surely control you. Which brings me to that little statement that I've been trying to remember to tell you for two Sundays. I said it two Fridays ago. You see, this spiritual instruction is not optional. Spiritual instruction is not optional. This is not something that you can either do or not do and get away with it. You cannot do it, but you won't get away with it. You will suffer until you do it. You're going to suffer as long as your moods and feelings master you instead of you learning to master your moods and feelings. And I want to ride that theme very hard because again, I think some of you have the idea, well, it doesn't really matter too much if I go to class on Friday night. It doesn't matter too much whether I go to class today because it's raining or it's snow, or it's, it's snowing or it's zero. So repeat after me again, spiritual instruction is not optional. Spiritual instruction is not optional. You remember that. What I'm telling you and sharing with you, this is not optional. You must come to the mastery of your emotions, your feelings, and your moods, or they will master you. And anything that you don't master will master you, and you will be its slave. Let's stand right now and do some work. I want to dress you up. I want to teach you how to, how to use this art, how to use this science.
Now talk to yourself and say to yourself, how would I feel? How would I feel? If I already had the good that I desire. How would I feel if I were already being what I want to be? How would I feel if I were already doing what I want to do? Now I want you to notice something that has happened within your being, within your mind, when you ask those questions. Every time you asked one of those questions, your mind, your emotions responded and answered you. Couldn't you feel the feeling? Yes. Come close, my son, that I may feel you. Come close, manifestation of good, that I may feel you. This is how you bring the manifestation of the good that you desire close to you. This is how you call it. This is how you invoke it. This is how you conjure it. I want you to notice this again. I want to belabor this. Touch yourself and say this. How would I feel if I were already being what I want to be, doing what I want to do, and having what I want to have? Didn't you get a flash of the feeling? I repeat again, by asking that question, you are bringing the manifestation closer, closer to you. How would I feel if I had all of the money that I needed and wanted and more besides? Say that. You got a response, didn't you? You know what that is giving you that response? It's the law. It's the law of mind. You see, your mind operates on law. God operates by law. What you actually felt was that actual money, that actual manifestation coming closer to you. Now you grab that mood. You grab it and you put it on and you wear it. Come on, put it on. Say with me again the mystic words from the Bible as Jacob the blind father said, come close my son, that I may feel you. The theologians never guess what that meant. It simply means Come close, good that I desire, that I may feel you. Come close in my mind that I may feel you. And when Jacob the blind father felt the sun or the manifestation of good, he blessed it. The feeling nature in me gets the blessing. That's the meaning of that. The theologians never guessed because, for the most part, they never got over the hang-up of what a dirty deal Jake, you know, who was it, Jacob played on Esau, or, or was it Isaac played on Esau? They never got over that, you see. Such a dirty deal. But that isn't what the Bible is trying to, to tell us by that story. By that story, the Bible is telling us that the feeling gets the blessing. What did I say? The feeling gets the blessing. That's right. Go ahead and write it down. It's good. Say it again. The feeling gets the blessing. Again. The feeling gets the blessing. You see, if you can conjure and feel the feeling of good health in your mind, that feeling will what? Get 
the blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The story shows us also that the subconscious mind is blind and that it operates on feeling. Now, in my brand of mind science, I say that when an impression reaches the subconscious mind, no matter whether we take it there by affirmation or visualization or whatever method, when an impression reaches the subconscious mind, it reaches there as feeling. We make affirmation to call the feeling. <laughs> we visualize to call the feeling. We pray to call the feeling. Glory to God! Why? Because the feeling gets the blessing. The father didn't know one boy from the other except by the what? The feeling. And whatever felt right to the Father, the source of all good, got the blessing. And you're always, in this sense, dealing with the blind Father. The Father's blind, doesn't care if your face is white. <laughs> doesn't care if your face is black. Doesn't care if you're Jewish or Puerto Rican. The Father is blind. <laughs> the law is blind. The Lord is blind. And is no respecter of persons. All the law of the Lord asks is come close my son that I may feel you and if you feel right I'll bless you <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah if you get in the right mood I'll bless you if you get in the right attitude I'll bless you the Lord is no respecter of persons Whoever gets into the right mood, whoever puts on the garments of praise, gets the blessing. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I don't care how sick you are, ready to kick the bucket. Get in the mood of praise. Take off your sick clothes and put on your well clothes. And start saying, thank God for healing me. Thank God for good health. And even though you feel like hell, keep thanking God for good health until you feel like heaven. 